Hi, this is Jim Starkweather with the Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and we've got another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got the Meng D9R Armor Bulldozer, and uh, I want to start off saying this is a big box. Uh, I mean, it, there's, you know, here, here's Meng's Middle Easterner set. So you guys know how big that is, you know, it's just a standard figure box, obviously, but uh, let me put it up against something else. Uh, let's see, what do I have here? Oh, okay, how about a big mini art, the ruined factory base. <laughs> so this is a normal, like, you know, kit size box, and so you can see. Then you look at it from the side. Whoa! <laughs> you know, so anyways, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big box for a, a 135th scale kit. Uh, there's a lot of plastic inside, too. There's not much empty space. So let's, uh, let me just cover what's on the, on the cover here before I open her up. Um, this is part of the Stegosaurus series, which obviously is pretty big. Uh, I would have called it the Brontosaurus series, but you know, maybe we're different. Uh, different. Uh, maybe they have really that they're saving Brontosaurus. I think for the like the um, the Carl, uh, the, the you know the large mortar pieces or the big rail guns and things like that. That maybe I'm sure they they are thinking at some some point they may want to build. Anyways, uh, so this is a one thirty fifth scale Stegosaurus series SS 2 uh, they had some assistance from Desert Eagle Publishing per, in terms of reference information, I'm sure. And uh, again, on the side of the box, we have uh, some nice uh, kind of uh, olive drabby kind of versions. This is uh, this says a bulldozer of the IDF Combat Engineer School, uh, Balhalats, Bal uh, August 2008. Uh, on the other side, we've got just a, a little bio piece. Um, talks about the DR9 and the kit info. This total kit is 247 millimeters in length and 126 millimeters in width. Um, it is, uh, this is also a photo of the bulldozer of the United States Marine Corps, Iraq 2004. Um, I'll do go ahead and do a little history piece uh, and uh, you can maybe get a little introduction to, uh, to where this uh, vehicle, kind of the, where its roots are and where it came from and, and who's using it. The Caterpillar D9 series started in 1954, and over the years it has become the standard as a heavy-duty construction bulldozer. Israel started using the D9s in military operations during the Suez War of 1956, and continued using them over the decades to follow. In 1982, the IDF suffered considerable casualties to their D9 crews, and from that point forward decided to increase their armor and defensive abilities. The first units to be upgraded were the D9 series models. The improved D9N could remove obstacles under enemy fire and destroy enemy buildings by striking, pushing, or crushing them. It could also clear hazardous items like landmines and homemade explosives. In 2003, the Ramta Division of Israel Aerospace Industries developed an all-new armor suite for the Caterpillar D9R series dozer. The new scheme consisted of an armored cap with high visibility as well as increased armor protection for the engine, fuel tanks, and other key systems. Also in 2003, the U.S. military purchased several field kits from Israel to add to their D9Rs used in Iraq. Since 2005, additional Sunulat slat armor has been added for protection from RPG attacks. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of history on the D9R armor bulldozer. Certainly was interesting for me to learn about um, you know, some of those things and, uh, obviously very enterprising, uh, group that, uh, created, uh, this, this, this concept anyways, which has been very valuable, I guess, for, for, uh, people overseas, uh, in our both, uh, U S and, uh, other groups that are obviously using it. I think they even used it and they've used it in forest fires and things like that too. So, um, let's go ahead and open this up and there we go. We've got, um, Lots of plastic. Um, you can see there's, you know, I'm just going to kind of do this kind of effect, but, you know, there's a lot of plastic in there. All right, so what have we got to start off? We've got a sprue here, obviously. Um, this is sprue S, and as well as having some little grab handles down at the bottom, it's got two of the major, uh, I believe, side portions on there. Uh, some more major uh, pieces of the backside, maybe. I'm not sure where. Uh, this one is sprue F. And then we have uh, L, which is uh, some of the flat pieces and so forth. But again, some small detail pieces are added in here, so be careful to watch out for those as well. Um, this is screw K, some of the doors and armored windows and so forth. 
Um, this one is Sprue H, and uh, just this is I just I'm looking at this detail and it really looks good. I mean, um, just the way they've built in a lot of the mechanicals. I mean, they didn't create separate parts for these, which is nice and and um, essentially make it overly complex. Um, that's obviously the very very bottom. I'm assuming of one of the component areas. Some some bars here, which look pretty good. Um, not seeing. I mean, I see some push pin marks on the backs here, but nothing. No production issues to mention. This is sprue G, by the way. And then we have sprue R, which is uh, again got some small fine detail pieces, as well as some of the uh, probably uh, dozer or um, mechanicals. This is sprue E, and again some small uh, mechanical uh, portions or major areas. Here's the dozer. Uh, the Now I do see some push pin marks on the back of this. I'm not sure how much of this is going to show. I believe probably something attaches onto the back, so maybe they weren't too worried about these, although I think they're pretty easily, I mean I can feel this one, but I think it's pretty easily sandable and so forth. Not, not shouldn't be an issue. Um, and again, uh, this is sprue D. And then we have sprue P, which uh, again, some more mechanicals and so forth. And sprue N, which is a more fine detail pieces, uh, some hatches, I think, some machine guns here, or one machine gun. And uh, some of the, uh, the plates, uh, stepping plate uh, material that's got obviously holes in it and so forth. Uh, this is sprue M with, uh, again, some more kind of graded areas. Those, aren't, those are not see-through, though. They're smaller. And here's uh, sprue J, which has seats and other... Um, radios and internal uh, pieces, probably the, for the uh, internal driver's area. And this one is two sprue Bs, I believe, which again, some of the more, it looks like hydraulic tubes and so forth, I'm not seeing any, any issues. And again, they're gonna be detailed photos after this, so don't uh, fret too much. And I've noticed Mang has, I think they used to do the uh, self-opening and sealing bags, they've gone to a completely sealed bag system. Um, this is uh, sprue A, so some of the uh, road wheels or the you know, uh, various uh, road uh, uh, running gear wheels and so forth, and some of the smaller idler wheels, I think. And then we have the armored glass. Ooh, this looks nice. So we have cl looks like we have clear, and then a uh, the different versions. I'm not sure they're identical, so I'm, I'm, I don't think you pile them up together. I think it's an option thing. So that maybe one has a tinted glass and the other is not. Those are both uh, sprue T, though. So they must have injected uh, coloration in the same mold, obviously, but uh, one has a coloration, one does not. Um, here's go ahead and do the uh, the individual track links. They don't look too menacing. They look uh, like they're going to be kind of easy, actually. Get this visible to you guys. Um, so, yeah, you can see these are um, these these are the ones with the the pins, and then these are the pinless uh, ones. I'm assuming this goes in, maybe into that, but anyways, I, I'm seeing us uh, on these. I'm seeing a small push pin mark on the very top portions because there's none on this side. So hopefully that's the hidden again. Oh, I, I think it is. I think is there something that attaches onto that? The, there are little pin marks there. I'm assuming maybe, assuming maybe something goes on there. Um, so again, looks pretty pretty straightforward. I'll, I'll take a look at that in the instruction area too. So okay, so that leaves us with. Um, a photo etch set, which again, we'll do some detailed photos of that, but it looks pretty good. This one is uh, specifically for this unit, obviously, um, and it looks like it has different serial numbers, raised serial numbers. Um, only two different ones, though, six four, uh, 949640 and 949634. And then we have a decal set, um, which again, I see the same 949640 and 949634. So I'm guessing there's two variants or two versions of this of this boulder. So there really aren't that many of these out there, obviously. So there's not a huge selection. Um, it looks like there's a con instrument control area there. Uh, obviously, some some things in Israeli um, and uh, U.S. I'm, I'm, let me take a look at the instructions. So that'll probably actually this will probably clear that up. So here's a reference sheet. Uh, that has the um, United States Marine Corps uh, 2004 and this one um, see if it has the number on it somewhere 
Oh yeah, this one's the 949640. And then this one is the bulldozer of the IDF 603rd Combat Engineers Battalion, 2nd Lebanon War, July 2006. And this one is the 949634. I believe that's correct. Um, so, uh, again, so two different variants provided here in terms of markings and uh, potential paint schemes and so forth. Um, very nice that they include all that information. Make, don't make you research it. I'm sure that's probably what uh, Desert Eagle helped them with was two different, uh, essentially what those two different versions, how they were different and so forth. These, uh, from what I understand, again, and I probably mentioned this in the history, but the, um, from what I understand, the uh, units that the United States used were shipped in kit form and they were essentially put on a, a D9 a Caterpillar. Uh, this is, a, by the way, this is a Caterpillar. It doesn't mention anywhere um, on here that's a Caterpillar because again, for, I assume for licensing reasons, but but this is a Caterpillar D9 uh, um, a dozer, which has been around since forever. And again, I probably covered that, but. Um, so here's the uh, instruction manual. Uh, it looks like uh, up to say 39 steps to put it together. And uh, it has some information here. You know, 1954 Caterpillar tractor introduced a brand new D9 dozer, bulldozer, which was mainly used for removing topsoil clearing work area and road obstruction mines. So that goes through all the different uh, information that's here. And this is in Russian. Uh, it's in, um, uh, I believe, Chinese, Japanese, I'm guessing, unless that's a different, uh, different version of um, Chinese. I can't quite tell. I think that's I think that's Japanese. I need I need to learn some kanji symbols and see if I can train my eye for for that type of distinction. Okay, so um, anyway, so yeah, an interesting little sketch artwork here. I'm not sure quite why they put that in. It's interesting. Um, and uh, so essentially, you know, typical Meng diagrams. Let me look for that track assembly diagram and see how that goes together. So yeah. Probably provide some photos of these, obviously, at some point. So yeah, here's here's kind of how they work. I, oh, I see. They create, so they do create kind of a, a chain effect with those two pieces, and then these track pieces lay over the top of those, and that's where they do attach via those little four pins that I, I noticed. So those those push pin marks um, probably will not show up, but you, you, for the really discriminating builder, you may want to sand them off as much as possible. But okay, so that covers the. Um, <clears throat> the uh, unboxing portion, we can go ahead and show you those photos now and you can get a better close-up look, look at some of these uh, parts and see how they came out.
Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed those photos, and the D9R Armored Bulldozer looks like it's going to be quite a project for people who want to build uh, essentially a very unique uh, vehicle that has obviously um, been seen and featured and, and so forth in, in combat videos and, and obviously in the news and so forth. So this will go along well with uh, especially somebody doing uh, maybe a, a unique diorama or just you know someone who wants to, to build something different. I mean, this is not a tank, that's for sure. It's, it has a, some similarities to a tank in terms of the armor and so forth, but it is definitely most definitely not a tank. And uh, I believe this has been available in some other form. I'm thinking resin or something, but obviously with the mainstream plastic release, we're going to see a lot more of these at shows and so forth. And uh, there's lots of great uh, weathering articles uh, out there for uh, heavy construction machinery like this. Very similar weathering to tanks, obviously, but there's also, you know, the things like the hydraulics and, and, and stuff that you, you need to get right. I'm thinking like, you know, things like this, because you can't, you can't have these painted. Otherwise, people are going to go, uh, that goes in and out, and it's really like, uh, you know, silvery and chrome colored. And uh, in fact, I'm surprised they didn't provide little chrome parts for those, because uh, that would have been kind of cool, actually. Um, so, I uh, hope you enjoyed this re review or uh, these, these uh, preview review of the um, D9R dozer from Meng. And we thank Meng for sending us this sample and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below.